Hey guys, Brent Hole Build Show talking to you today from a real treasure hunting find, Dowd Tools in Garland, Texas. I'm going to tell you about a great place to find tools, how to look at tools, the history of tools, all about tools today on the Build Show. Come join me. So guys, we're at Dow Tools, Garland, Texas, about an hour from me in Fort Worth. I'm always looking for hand tools, right? And I'm, I'm still trying to use hand tools because I think there's a precision with hand tools that uh, is important in our work. Lynn Dowd was a furniture maker and began to collect hand tools and collect and collect and collect. And as you'll see from what we're going to walk through today, it's a great collection of hand tools. The problem that some of you guys have if you didn't go to North Bennett Street like I did and didn't train on hand tools is how do you pick them out and how do you choose? I'm a aficionado that I believe that good hand tools are from the past pre-1940 okay we're going to look at these tools today i'm going to show you how to pick out great hand tools so come on this is a great collection of tools there's a ton of history here soldering irons hammers we've got all kinds of crazy stuff that lynn lynn's collected uh parts and pieces for for wood planes uh, levels, right? When levels were beautiful and awesome. We'll first talk about saws, miter saws, right? A lot of you guys have a miter saw at work. Maybe the first tool you bought. Here are an early miter saw, right? This miter saw, um, you see you clamp this thing here and it moves, it moves the miter saw, right? This is how you cut perfect joints in wood. If you wanted to do a perfect 45, this is a Stanley. This is probably from the 1920s, right? We've got some other ones a little bit later. 20s into the 50s, 60s, this is how you cut wood on the job site, not with the power compound DeWalt mess that we all use today, right? He's got a collection of saws down here. And um, how do you know, right? What are we looking at here? How do we know the, the right saw? A real quick trick is, is that if you look at the handles, okay, you can really end up picking the, the quality saw. For instance, here's a handle here, okay, and it's kind of plastic, right? See that? This is a, a distant saw, okay, distant was a good saw. Um, and we have two types of saw. We have a rip saw and a crosscut saw. Historically, you used a crosscut saw for obviously cutting across the grain of the board and then a rip saw for cutting with the grain. Now, if we look at the difference between the two, right, you see the teeth, right? How much bigger the gap is between those. The reason you had a big gap in the teeth was because the wood fiber was really heavy. It's the same thing as you pick saw blades today. If you have a very fine saw blade, it's for cross cutting and a bigger saw, a bit more teeth, right? Bigger teeth with a bigger gap between them. Those are for ripping, right? So we're still using that same technology today. But you look at this handle, this is probably from the 50s or 60s. It's almost like a Bakelite uh, uh, handle. Now, look at this handle, right? This one is plywood, right? So we know that's from like the 60s or 70s. Um, yeah, and this is a Craftsman. It's a little bit later. It's a crosscut saw. But the really good saws, okay, if you want to pick a good saw, it's all in the handle. Now, I immediately, when I touch this handle, when I feel it, okay, it is comfortable in my hand. Look how these things are, are, are smoothed over on the sides here. Notice how smooth my hand is, how it has these little grip things that come over here that really cradle my hand. This is a very comfortable saw. If we get a later saw, like, I don't know, this one, right? It's, it's clunky, okay? This is too heavy. It's not rounded over. Uh, this would give me blisters, okay? And so even though it's decorated here, it's just, it's not as good. When craftsmen were using hand tools a lot, right? That handle, and I know that this, this handle and this cross as a miter saw is earlier because you look at the quality of these handles here and how much more comfortable this one is, you know immediately it's an older saw. Now, those are saws. Let's go back and look at some planes. This is a paradise to come here and check out all this stuff. Now, if you're looking for planes, the way Lynn's got it organized here is by size. There was a number one, which was a really small plane, a number two, uh, which is, a, it was, the number one's almost a kid's plane. It's, it's really small. Number two is a nice bodied size. And then they grow in size, three, four, five, and the length of the plane body would get longer. This is a number seven, right? And a number eight would be the longest one that you could get. The reason why you would have a real long body is because you're trying to smooth a very long board. 
And so the longer the board was and the, more, the flatter that you wanted to make it, the more you needed this body, and here's your plane cutting down here. Um, a very short plane would, would bump over the board. A very long plane would keep that board level and, and straight longer. This is before the era when boards came out of a, a lumber mill perfectly flat and straight. You were straightening and flattening your own boards. And you would take twos and threes and fours and actually go across the grain diagonally to flatten a board down. And then you get a number six or something, or seven or eight even. It's called a joiner because those planes, you're actually joining wood together or making very smooth surfaces. So planes actually had a purpose, right? Now, how do you pick a good plane? To do that, I want to go outside. I want to show you a whole collection of planes and how to figure that out. Okay, so when you're looking at planes, realize the history and how things change, okay? This is uh, 17, early 1800s. All the, the whole thing's made out of wood, and you have a simple piece of, of metal, right? And it was held in with a wedge, right? And there, there's, your, there's your metal inside, the, inside this, this wood body. And then what would happen is, is you would uh, slip your wedge back in here, right? And you would, you would adjust, okay? your 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 plane right in here a little bit cumbersome a little bit hard to use and so the next iteration of planes was this dual uh, material plane right where you got a metal top part and a wood sh wood you know plate this is 1870s 1880s up into the 19 20s and 30s so some guys trained with these and really liked these the metal body planes right were kind of the later iteration these were all cast steel and they, they went through a number of iterations about how they were adjusted and, and how they were, they, they were used. But you really get a sense for the history of the tools. If you're looking for tools, I would recommend a metal body planes. Now, you're gonna have to make a determination what size you want, right? This is a, a five, yeah, this is a five. I like a five, right? I like the, the length, of, that, was the, that was the plane I kind of learned on. Some guys like four, some guys like threes. And so it really just varies. I told you don't go to Home Depot and try to buy a plane. The Buck Brothers or whatever the ones you're trying to sell, they're cheap. You will get frustrated trying to use those tools. If you can't find a good Stanley, remember this is a Stanley 62. I've got a Stanley 62, it's a low angle jack plane. Uh, I think it's a great tool. Uh, there's a company called Lee Nielsen, okay, and he began making uh, copies of the old original Stanley tools. Now remember, the design for these tools was great. They were used for almost a hundred years, right, um, where they, they, they patented these designs, they patented the changes. Well, Lee Nielsen began to make these, and his castings are really heavy. See how much thicker Lee Nielsen's uh, uh, castings are? He uses cherry. Uh, the original uh, Stanley planes were made with rosewood. And so you begin to see the bronze and the cherry and the other things that Lee Nelson's doing. So those are really great planes. The other thing is, is that there's what's called a Stanley bedrock. The Stanley bedrocks became kind of the, the finer craftsman tools, right? They were, they were heavier casting. They had finer adjustments in the back. Again, Lee Nelson has the, the Stanley bedrock as well, uh, or the bedrock plane. And so heavier castings, details like that. I talked in my, one of my other videos about tools that the low angle block plane is a great tool. It's low angle means it's going to shave the grain much easier. Just compare those two, low angle versus the, the normal plane. Uh, it's going to shave wood easier. These are Lee Nielsen versions, right, of the Stanley, right? You can see that uh, this is a really comfortable and beautiful tool to use. Getting good tools, getting a Lee Nielsen tool, getting a good Stanley bedrock, getting a, a plane like that is going to improve the quality of your work. When you can get a plane going, you wax the bottom of it, it's sliding across your wood beautifully. These ribbons of wood are just ripping out of the, the saw. It's beautiful. Look at this, guys. This is a, uh, see the bottom of that? See, that is a window sash mutton, right? See that half? I love old tools. I love what they teach us. I love that how they show us things used to be crafted and used to be made. Uh, things like this are great history. They'll make you, help you understand how buildings were built, help you understand what the craftsmen knew in the past. Buying and using old hand tools is important and an important skill to become a master builder. I want you guys to practice it. I want you to find these old tools. I want you to become a student of history. 
Follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.